Hello, in this part we're going to scatter around some of these sci-fi portals you see here on the scene. Now here back in Houdini, let's start with that. So we can do similar methods that I just showed you here. Or we can also, for example, use a scatter, but the old scatter with the height field. So we have actually a height field scatter node. And this will then scatter points on a height field. So we can directly input here the height field. And as you can see, it will just scatter points there. So for scattering, you can just use the method you prefer. There isn't much big difference if you're going to use alignment or the height fit scatter. It's just basically what you think is the easiest way of getting the result. In this case, I'm just showing this uh, height fit scatter as well. And we're going to start with calculating the occlusion. So we can grab mask by occlusion. Click it in here. And now we have this. Now we can have some of the parameters here. We can play around with our ramp and I want to scatter the sci-fi portals on sort of lower parts of my terrain. So basically where we have the light value here, I want to have there a possible chance of a portal. So I'm going to invert the ramp here. And like so. We also play around here with some of that minimum occlusion value. And let's put it to maybe 0.5. Mm, yeah, that could work. Let's play around with the ramp here as well. We can really define the area. I think this is okay. Maybe a little bit less intense. Then further, we can also use a mask by feature. Then we're going to use the height field mask by feature. And we can calculate then the slopes. And then we can subtract the slopes just in case we have like in this case for example too much occlusion on the slope so we can tweak that here as well we can fine-tune these areas more so these areas are now where we could have that model and I'm also going to use a remapping so height field remap and this can help boosting the mask again so we're gonna plug in the mask here and then we can decide to boost it a bit more, maybe just a little bit. So since I'm working in tiles, uh, I don't want to place a portal here on the border. So with the cliff system, it doesn't matter that much if I have like here something on the border. So with the portal, I would like to keep it away from the borders of my terrain. So we can calculate the border. To select the border, I'm going to take a blur. So mask blur. Let's start from our occlusion in this case. And we have here then a value for the border. So I'm going to set this to a constant. And let's increase that. And we can slowly see here a border now. Now we can also use the blur here to sort of get rid of that information if you want that. So we can blur that away. And then we can have some options here. Now we can use a layer node to for example subtract them from one another. So we can just load that in here and we can then use the subtract. And of course I only want this to be a mask. So we can subtract both of these together. So we have this result and now this is then my mask. So here I have the height field scatter and nothing happens at the moment. So notice that there is a small issue and you can simply bypass this if we go from our occlusion directly here to the height field scatter. And I also place a clear mask here. So that's how we can quickly get around that. So now I've placed these points based on this mask here. So again we can get the border here. And we can see that we can delete some of the points here. So these points are maybe too much. And we can either lower them. But I also would like to bring in sort of like a failsafe system. That if they are too close we can just fuse them. And but before I actually do the fuse here. I also want to 
go here to the output settings and I don't need to keep the terrain so we only have the points actually now furthermore so we're going to use the fuse and we can set the fuse value to quite large value so I will go even higher than that let's say 60 and now all these points are fused together so we have like one point there in each of that area so we don't place too much of these sci-fi constructions around because that won't look that nice now furthermore I'm gonna bring this here to the side and now this is ready to then copy and model on so I'm gonna bring in so I'm gonna bring in these sci-fi portals so here I have the portals and this is basically then the same thing that we did with the cliffs so I have an attribute which is called the variant so we have the variant 0, 1 and 2 so we're gonna here then also create a randomizer randomize I'm gonna create this to a ununiform discrete set the dimensions to 1 and I will go from 0 to 2 then I'm going to cast this to an integer cast variant to an integer oh, I forgot to set actually here the variant naming and now we can copy two points this geometry to the points based on the variant name of course so now I have some variation in these props we can also add some variation in the in the rotation if you want that because right now they all are standing like this so the scatter height with scatter has some variation on its own as you can see we can have some rotation there but I'm mainly interested in this one actually the jaw so we're gonna set this to 180 so we have some rotation there we can we can still do this one if you want that now the next thing for the integration of these portals is I want to integrate them better in the terrain so previously with my rocks I projected this into the terrain so if I would for example use the same technique so projection geometry into that terrain let's grab the terrain here and you will see that this gives a weird result this won't be that nice so if I would merge the models with the terrain we will have things like this so that's not looking that good and we probably also could use some more uh, geometry on my terrain some more quality but overall this is not really what I'm looking for so I'm not gonna use uh, this one here I'm going to project basically, I would say, custom shapes. So I already made that, so I'm going to quickly load them in. So as you can see, these are my custom shapes. So I have a, for each of that variant attribute, I made a custom shape. So this is for variant 0, and this will reference then to this portal. So as you can see, what I did is I placed uh, spheres where we have the beginning and the end of that portal and then I've also created like a platform around that, around that portal so whenever the portal is placed in a scene I'm also sure that the terrain will be sort of like flat so it has some platform so I know that if I place props or scatter rocks here that they will also have like a nice uh, flat area there so I will do this then for the other one as well so, and as you can see, this is just a sphere there. So, this is basically then the result. These basic shapes. So, since I used the variant attribute here as well, I can copy paste the uh, copy two points. And this is then my input here. And I'm going to plug it in here. And now we have scattered around uh, these models. And this is actually what I want to project in the terrain. And this will actually be way better integration. If I would view this now, this is something that I would like better. 
So we still have the option here to maybe go back. And if I, for example, don't like that too much, I can here lower the scale a bit, like maybe a bit lower, like so. What we can also do is now we projected them, but I can also make a mask for them so I can do the mask by object. So I can plug in the terrain and plug in these objects. So now I can mask them so we can blur them a bit into the terrain. So before I blur them, I actually want to expand the mask and I'm going to use a blur for that. So mask blur. And in that mask blur, we're going to use the feature called expand, of course. And we can here expand the area. So we're just going to expand it by, let's say, 5. And then we do a height flare blur. And we're going to blur the height field based on the mask. So we can blur this a bit. We can also use the mask aware blur, which will keep a bit more... Uh, which will follow the terrain sometimes better and let's use that over here this will now be a bit more subtle so if it is too much blur we can then lower this we can see we can easily like blur this out so we're gonna keep it low so maybe like five or three it's just like a subtle blur there i'm also going to clear the mask here You can also actually save out the mask if you want to use this for something else. You can save out the mask as well. So last thing to do here is to actually merge the sci-fi props with the rocks I had here. So we're going to uh, make some little changes here. So I'm going to delete the merge node here. And so this is my output of the terrain. And I'm going to output this over here so we basically then merge or blend the the cliffs in there and then blur that bit that's fixed the terrain should be ready to go and then here i can then merge here my prop like so now that's all set so i have scattered around some basic rocks, other models, and so on. So I'm ready to go now to make a digital asset, add some instancing, and that will be everything ready for the PGG. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.